so this video is about how I built this uh, pretty much automatically feeding foam cutter. These foam blocks uh, come from a commercial roofing company and they often pay to throw this out and there's a surcharge at the dump for them throwing this stuff out. Uh, they could probably recycle it, but people, people do throw these things away. Um, so oftentimes you're doing them a favor by taking this foam off of their hands and theoretically you could probably like go into business uh, cutting this up into sheets that are whatever thickness they need and just sell it back to them um, or sell it to residential people if that's something you want to do otherwise you can just uh, use them for your house but Cutting them can be a real pain in the butt because like a normal sawzall blade won't fit through and it'll tend to like waver around. So um, I think it's probably best to get it the right thickness first. And um, this is like the first, uh, I really put this together like a hack and it works just fine for my purposes. But for professional purposes, you might want to like measure more carefully where the, how high the wire goes. Um, but I got it pretty close, like it's five and a quarter inches thick on one side, and I think it was like five and a half on the other side. And I want it to be like about a maximum of five and a half inches, so <laughs> I think I did pretty well without, without worrying about it too much. Now, I'm not even sure if it's necessary, but what we have here is a spring-loaded wire tensioner. Um, the wire expands about two inches. This hot wire came from a space heater and so that's why I got it for free. Otherwise what people typically do is they use like a voltage down converter and some sort of amperage limit limitator and you can probably find videos detailing like how that stuff works elsewhere. But those things cost money. I think when I saw a $30 price tag I'm like oh hell no. So I went to take apart the space heater. Every space heater is different. Other people claim that there's like useful ceramic insulators in their space heaters. I didn't have that. Um, and actually, the anti if there's an anti-tip uh, cutoff switch inside that space heater, it sure didn't function anymore in mine. <laughs> so I think it's like the cheapest of the cheap space heaters here that I took apart and used for this project. Now I made some approximately seven foot long uh, rails there um, along which the foam glides because that table is like really uh, jagged and it'll tend to catch anything that uh, sits on it. It's, it's a stone cutting table. Okay, so that wire nut can't handle the heat even though the heat is uh, partially dissipated by this copper wire. Clearly the insulation on this copper wire can't handle all the heat. So if you care about like making sure that there's less exposed wiring, then you can use the ceramic wire nuts that often comes with, come, come with like oven igniters, but it doesn't really matter that much probably. By the way, wood is a great uh, electrical insulator. So most people construct things out of wood, you probably will too. So I recommend using wood in place of the plexiglass. Um, I used fairly large bolts. They should dissipate any heat that is like transferred from the wire to the bolts before getting too hot. And if you're using like jagged wood or whatever, you could, for your rails, you could probably wrap it in like aluminum foil from your kitchen and then it should be pretty slippery after that, I guess. Um, so you might as well strip that back a bit farther uh, just to avoid the bad smell because it does smell. Uh, it smells a lot like burning that, but obviously it, to some degree, it does smell like burning that. These butt connectors uh, magically <laughs> managed to uh, not melt yet. I had butt connectors there because the wire snapped when I dropped a foam block on it. Um, the table was just too high and it was too awkward, so I recommend a lower angle, like 40 or 50 degrees, which is what it ended up being in the end, but not at the beginning for me. So, working foam cutter. You can use like a metal pulley or a metal thing, but it'll just, uh, it'll be like able to shock people and I wanted to avoid that personally. So that's why I use a ceramic, but you could totally use metal. Uh, this is a two and a half inch ceramic insulator. If you buy two of them, it'll be like 16 bucks, including shipping. It's a good diameter uh, so that the hot wire can wrap around. It's not as flexible as some other wires, so bigger diameter 
can help reduce uh, I don't know, problems associated with that. It doesn't have a hole entirely through it, so if, if you don't have like a diamond hole saw uh, that's the same diameter, then you might be able to get, if you don't want to buy it either, <laughs> you might be able to get a, uh, a regular drill bit that is for ceramic and drill a hole through that's like the size for a bolt. And then on this side with the open end, uh, you get like some little bearings or something and you, you put a bearing in there and then uh, you put some washers on the bottom so that that slides around, um, assuming this is gonna be the bottom. And so there isn't friction there. And uh, the little bearing will be held down at the bottom by gravity. So you'll have a pivot point up top and a pivot point on the bottom that are pretty tight tolerances. Not super tight, but tight enough to be better than what I made. And what I made, I consider to be quite adequate. So that's an option for about 16 bucks. Now the rest of the video is pretty much a like linear, time linear um, assembly of the product. There will be some information in it. You can choose whether or not it's worth your time to watch or whether to skip around. I was expecting some like ceramic insulators in there, but I didn't find any. I was pretty disappointed. There's two different like coils um, and I was testing what, what kind of voltage is going to it. I confirmed that it was 120 volts that was being fed to the wire. 120 volts AC. So that, that could let me know that I could just feed direct power to it if I wanted to. But I decided to use the electronics in the heater. Um, that way I didn't have to like figure out whether or not they were necessary. <laughs> now here I am untangling the wire from how it's set up. It's like a, a piece of paper that's wrapped in a circle. It's totally useless to me. It's got a bunch of waves in it. it sucks. It's about 16 feet long. Um, that was pretty inconvenient. The thing about these wires is, and the thing about electricity is, the longer that the wire is, the more resistance is in it. And that means the less current is going to make it through the whole wire. Um, so longer wires mean less electricity is going to run through it. And if you have like too much electricity run through it, then it'll overheat uh, and it'll melt. <laughs> and there's some kind of somewhat complicated uh, calculations for seeing whether or not the wire is going to overheat. Uh, I just decided um, they already measured the wire out when they built the heater unit and it was going to work just fine under 120 volts. I didn't have to get voltage converters. Okay, this is some kind of safety switch. It takes the incoming power and shuts it off, or the outgoing power and shuts it off. I'm not sure which. And I got the wire that, two wires that went to the big conductor. They're tied and they're coming out here. Those large uh, so solid copper wires are tied to the plastic grill so that if it gets tugged on it's not gonna I like took pull a out. small break from filming because you guys aren't gonna have these materials so you have to decide what materials to use for yourself um, I used scraps that I have around this is from a fish tank well this plexiglass from a 650 gallon fish tank these are clamps uh, some springs that you can save and never use well, I guess the, the bolts aren't exactly scrap my nice stainless bolts because I'm neurotic this is a, <laughs> a five kilovolt, uh, like surge protector, or breakaway device or something. Yeah, not normal, but let's just mount it through here so that it spins. The important part is that it spins. Um, this one spins as well. It's not really made to spin around under low tension, especially. So I put some washers in there, a few bushings, because it's not a perfect cylinder inside. So we'll see how that works. Corner of the fish tank, nice and easy. And then lastly, I bolted that together. I pulled it so that there was tension over there on the arm and uh, clamped it down. And now it's time to put these rails together so that I can stick, uh, so I can stick clamps at top and bottom and then place the foam on these channels. And hopefully it'll slide down and cut itself automatically. So there's like some forums where people talk about building hot wires and 
they often use like guitar strings, I guess. Um, I'm not going to go into details like that. You, uh, you, you want something that's like thermally and particularly like electrically insulative, just so that there's less of a risk of getting shocked. Um, and you don't want to cause a short between two very long, like distant sections of the wire because that'll like really reduce the resistance in your circuit and then the amperage will go way up. So that's why they typically use an amperage controller, I guess, or as a safety factor, possibly. But yeah, I didn't want to bother with all that and purchasing stuff. So that was just the result of it heating up. The spring pulled the wire and then I turned it off and the spring went back. That's what you saw there. That's what's going on right now too. Oh, So the wire has a lot of waves in it. Even though I heated it up and let it uh, cool off twice, the, the waves that were originally in it are still in there. But only after putting the foam block uh, on it I guess that allows the wire to heat up even more by insulating the wire. Um, but the wire stretched like a few more inches and it got nice and pretty flat, you know, not, not as if I bought a brand new wire or something, but it's quite flat enough for me. And then I had to readjust because it stretched and because it got flatter or whatever, I had to readjust that thing. So now it's taut again. Now, this angle is too much, and it's really awkward to put the foam down on there. And then currently the rails aren't actually spaced properly. I only... and the wire snapped because I, I dropped it on the wire, and the wire is just not that strong. And that foam block's actually pretty heavy. <laughs> um, so here I am, like, figuring out what to do. I'm gonna, just going to use the floor jack to, like, test different heights and see what will still allow the foam block to travel down. It would have been quite a bit easier if I had had more than one inch of um, like railing surface area on each rail because then I wouldn't have to like spend a bunch of time adjusting the width of the two rails to try to get it like exactly eight feet. And I'm a really a lazy YouTube video creator so if there's any like additional information that I think about I'll just add it to a comment in the comment section that's gonna be like the normal thing for my videos it gives me a happy medium be between like helping you guys out and uh, not stressing out too much on my end <laughs>